very useful also in common <laughs> applications, not necessarily in physics. So we will learn what is objective. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I wanted to present you our um, result, or actually a set of results on objectivity as a property of quantum states. And uh, this, has, this work has been done in um, the National Center for Quantum Information in Utaisk. And the team is Ryszard Chorodecki, Paweł Chorodecki, our Palacio PhD student Jan Tuzemski, and, and me who is, who is presenting. Who is presenting the talk? Uh, I wanted to warn you from the beginning that the talk will be rather sketchy, so I will show you uh, at least three different things we have been working on, or three different groups of results. And actually, if you want to learn something in more detail, I would be happy to, to come back and, and show in detail. So now this is only, uh, so to say, a, 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 a propaganda talk in order to, to, to show you the philosophy and, and, and the tools we have been, uh, we have been using um, in the last two years. This work has been done in the last, in the last two years. So, the, 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 fundamental, the fundamental question which was actually posed uh, already some time ago, by at least in, uh, at the beginning of 2000, by, by Wojtek Żurek and collaborators, what process leads from fragile quantum information to objectively existing classical which, which we know which is sort of robust, yes? You all see me here standing, and there is no doubt that if you look at me, then the next observer who looks at me will see me in the same place unless I move. Yes? So you, you will not move me by, by just looking at me. Uh, in, quantum, in quantum mechanics, this is of course not so, not so easy because we know that in general measurement chains is state. So the one who observes next will see a, uh, will see a state which is a result of uh, previous observation and perhaps some inner dynamics of the system. Okay. So now the question, uh, the question is uh, how it comes that in, in, in the real life we see we see the world as, as objective, while at the, at the quantum level objectivity is 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 rather a rare phenomenon. If it happens at all. Okay. Uh, and this is about the, the, the basic motivation. The, the, motivating question. So, as you see, this is actually, a, uh, this fits in this big seg which is called uh, quantum to classical transition. So, we, we focus on one aspect of the quantum to classical transition, namely, how comes if we treat quantum theory as the most fundamental theory that, that we know, that we have right now of nature, how comes <coughs> uh, uh, as a result of this theory, what we see in our everyday life is, is uh, object. Okay? Uh, so, uh, first of all, let me, let me try to make uh, precise the definition of uh, objectivity, or actually not precise, but, but at least to set some... Uh, it's not very precise because many. it doesn't say what is many. It's, it's not precise at all, and actually many is... Two. Three. Three. Two. Three. Three. Making, three is making this definition precise was one, one of the uh, parts of the war. Okay? Let me, uh, let me first... Uh, also, without perturbing it, it is also not clear. Guys, please, not really. please, <coughs> please, give me, give me one moment, okay? Give me one moment because it did not fit in the transparency. You will now see, you will now see uh, what happens. So, a state of a system, so we talk about objectivity in the sense of a state of a system, okay? So now we, 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 we somehow narrow down the definition to the, to the existing, uh, to the objective existence of a state. And then that, the definition which we uh, adopted from, uh, from Jurek's paper on quantum Darwinism is that a state of the system exists objectively if many observers can find it independently and without perturbing it. Okay? Of course, this definition is, is just a fault. It is just a fault. Yeah? It, 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 it's, it's not, it, it is not precise at all, but, but so, soft and so to say intuitive. So the first, the first part uh, of our work was to, uh, to try to make this definition precise. Okay? Before, before I present you um, what we have done there, let me first uh, s uh, set the framework that we work in. So we work in a framework which is which is known as a, as a, as a quantum uh, quantum Darwinism. This comes from from Wojtek, Jurek and, and collaborators, and the framework is the following: that we have our system of interest, 
which interacts with many environments. Okay, so this is somehow a feature, pardon, which is usually uh, overlooked in or, or not studied in, in, say, open quantum systems or, or, or in decoherence theory, where the environment is, is not just a single, say, heat path, but actually it consists of, of several parts. Okay, and this is, this is somehow the basic, uh, the basic um, paradigmatic shift that instead of, uh, instead of um, uh, trying to observe the system itself, okay, we study the situation where the system interacts with multiple environments and the observers observe the environment. So they learn information about the system indirectly. This is actually the case in, 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 in uh, quite a few real life situations <coughs> because the photons scatter off. Skin and, and, and reach your eyes. Um, uh, now, some of the, uh, as I said, some of the environments are monitored by uh, by observers, and some of the environments pass unobserved. Okay, of course, this is this is again a sort of a realistic situation, and we need we know that we have to trace out some information because otherwise, otherwise we are dealing with a fully quantum system with a fully quantum uh, quantum correlations. Um, uh, so, um, to sum up, uh, we have a system interacting with many, uh, with many environments and the environments are observed by, uh, by independent observers. So, you what we are interested in, we are interested in so what kind of information those uh, pieces of environment uh, carry about the system. So, what can we learn about the system through, through the environment? You see that this is a complete, so to say, uh, paradigmatic shift with respect to, um, say, master equation, yeah? where in, in Born Markov approximation, you actually treat environment as a big inert system, which uh, almost does not feel, uh, does not feel the, 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 the central system uh, that we study, but only exerts some. Uh, some uh, some forces on the system, and we are interested in those forces, except by the, by the environment. Here, it's completely to, to the opposite. Okay, the system uh, the system evolves according to, to some some prescribed dynamics, and we look at, at the traces of this evolution uh, in in the pieces of the of the environment. So here. Uh, uh, mm, Summarizing the environment is uh, fragile and the system is somehow robust. In Born Markov is to, is to the opposite. The environment is robust and it does not feel the system, and the system is fragile and it feels the, 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 the interaction with the environment. Okay? So, so how, how would you define the environment? Both pieces or all these pieces are somehow complex systems. So what's really the physical difference between the environment and the system? What is, the, is it is somehow it is defined by the by the interaction actually <coughs> the interaction as you see the interaction is mutual. You you will see you you see you see it in a moment. You will see it in a moment, but usually usually you know what is the system. Yes, so you you do not deal with a completely symmetric situation where uh, where uh, everything is a permutational environment. Environment. You see, here I drew the picture in a sort of a, a sun or, or star shape. It's not. It's not by. It's not by chance. Okay. I, I'll, I'll try to answer this question. I know the answer to my question. Mm -hmm. Suppose that S is an hydrogen atom, mm -hmm. and E four is voltanite. So, so for example, so then the difference is here. <coughs> system as well. System is not very well. Okay, so the size of this environment comes into play, and yes. we are able. Yes, to sure. Yes. sure, 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 sure. sure. So the answer could be that this is much more complicated than more degrees of freedom. Mm -hmm. Well, the pieces, those pieces of environment are actually uh, sort of say macroscopic. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, I will. That's the answer. I will. I will show it. I will show it in a, in a concrete model. I will show you. Uh, a concrete model where uh, this is the celebrated model by Jos and Zeg of collision of the coherence, where the system is a small dielectric sphere which can be in two different uh, locations and it's illuminated by a constant flux of 
particles, let's say, let's say photons. Okay? And then those photons constitute the environment while uh, the, the, the sphere is the, central, is the central system we want to study. But in any case, putting the border between what is quantum and what is classical, what is upset and what is, what, is, what, what is the system, what is the apparatus and what is the system is very hard and depends on the, on the situation. So it is defined by the situation. I don't think that you can give a general definition of what is system, what is environment, uh, very general in yeah. this moment. Yeah, yes. So uh, that, that's why I'm so unprecise here, but I will try to make it a little bit more precise by choosing a concrete uh, type of the, of the interaction between the system and the, uh, and, and, and the environments, okay? And then I think it will become... I never understood bigger. what does it have to do with Darwin. Where is survival of the fittest or something like that? Oh, this is a tough question. <laughs> this is most of yeah. this catchy, most of this yeah. catchy names are simply just for propaganda reasons. So. I thought that there is. I will, no, uh, no. Doctor, I, I will, I will show it later. Yes, but, it's, but, it's, but to tell you, it. yes, to tell you, to tell you the truth, in, in, yeah. in, in, in a big part, this program has been born out of us trying to understand what quantum values is. We, uh, in a big part, we failed. So we have to uh, work the things our way. We, we have been trying to understand what, what void and collaborators mean by quantum Darwinism. And you will explain. I, I have some idea, but as I said, this program, which I'm presenting, uh, has been born out of us trying to understand what quantum Darwinism is. This is probably to differentiate it from no, quantum Darwinism. Maybe this Darwinism means that uh, the pointer state is, uh, is the state which is the best in the sense uh, of uh, adoption to the It's not only that. that. It's not only that. Uh, I, I will, please give me some time, okay? So, uh, and also I... Uh, so, coming back to the setup, so the many environments, I observe the... Uh, the observers observe the environments. Some of them pass unobserved. And uh, we uh, assume that there is a decoherence in the usual sense. So that there is a prepared basis such that after, after some time the, the state of the system itself stabilizes in this. Is the main difference not, not in the fact that observers can observe the environment without disturbing it? In a yes. Okay. Yes. So, so, now, now we come, so now, now we come. Now we come to the to the to, to the non disturbance. Okay. So uh, as uh, as you have uh, uh, noted, one of the crucial things in the definition is how to how to define. Uh, Perturbation. What does it mean to uh, gain information uh, or observe without perturbation? So actually, the, the, the work which I'm putting right now was that we went just word by word in this definition, trying to make it make it precise. For example, uh, observation is a uh, Neumann measurement, is a is a is a projective measurement. Um, uh, independently means that the, those measurements. <coughs> product with respect to the observers. So each observer is acts independently of, of the other observers. And so on and so forth. Okay? But the crucial, I, I'm, I'm not going to go into the details, but I will show you the crucial thing, namely, what does it mean to be, uh, what does it mean to not to perturb? What we have adapted was the definition actually which appeared in the APR, in the famous APR board debate, in the board's uh, uh, response to the EPR paper. I know maybe some of you remember this response. He has been working very, very hard on on how to uh, how to reply to to the uh, to the accusation that quantum mechanics is not complete. And he came out with a with a sort of a non-disturbance definition, which was later uh, made precise by by Howard Wiesman in uh, three, some three years ago. And uh, roughly speaking, it says that there exists a uh, so phrasing it in a modern language, that there exists a non-demolition measurement which leave, leaves the whole state between the system and the observed portion of the environment unchanged. Of course, but there is always perturbation. Even the environment is big, then in order to interact with the environment, we perturb it. But somehow we must say which perturbation is important and which is not. Uh, it will... So we must touch the, yeah, we must, we must touch the system, way. and of course, this uh, oh, leaving yeah. the state unchanged is in a in a uh, oh, come on, come on. this is in a uh, this is in a statistical sense after we forget the results. It, I, I'll show it in a moment. 
uh, but I forgot to uh, introduce uh, some of the notation. So the uh, joint quantum state between the system and the observed portion of the environment, I will denote. Yeah, I, I, should, I, I, I propose that you go beyond this transparency because otherwise, independently of presence of Rosetta and Tursky, you will not proceed. Okay. We will proceed. Okay. All right. So, uh, so the so the first so there are two cornerstones in in uh, in making this definition uh, formal and reaching the conclusion which which I so. So first of all, the non-disturbance uh, due to Bohr, and the second, this is more more technical thing which we had to uh, which we had to assume that the only correlation between the environments should be the common information about the system. In other in other words, we by a hand preclude uh, interaction, a system mediated uh, interaction between the environments. Now, grouping this all together and making actually a very simple uh, mathematical but not so simple, uh, so to say, logical reasoning, and we reach the conclusion that <coughs> this definition actually specifies a shape of a state. It specifies uh, what, uh, it narrows down what class of states are possible in order to fulfill the definition of, uh, uh, of objectivity. We call them uh, spectrum broadcast structures. And you see it has a it has a particular form. Maybe here on the system side we have this uh, pointer basis, yes, which we assume that it exists. Um, uh, and on the on the observed environment we have some arbitrary uh, states, which nevertheless have uh, orthogonal supports for different index uh, which labels the pointer basis. Now, mm. of course, it's a very strong assumption about the system class environment because it means that each of these environments is really uh, decohering into the same pointer basis. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's why all environments are identical in a way. <coughs> uh, they are identical from one point of view. They are identical from the point of view of carrying the same information about the pointer yes. basis. But the dimensions are completely arbitrary. Sure. And of course, of course, you are you are right that this is a strong this is a strong uh, result. This is a strong uh, constraint so on the form. Uh, but it comes it comes from here. No, it's not a definition. This is the it's result. Assumption. This is no no. This is a result of the assumptions made in order to make the definition precise. <laughs> okay. This assumption. <laughs> This assumption. This, this assumption. This yeah. assumption. I assume. I assume this those. Is the result. Yes, I assume those. I, I perform. Uh, as I said, if you are interested, next time I can show you the details. I perform the reasoning, and what I reach, I reach the conclusion that the uh, possible states are of those of those types. Yeah. As you see, there is a, a so uh, formally speaking in this modern terminology, this is a. Uh, maximally correlated C, 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 so classical, 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 classical state. You see that there is a perfect correlation between uh, each of the signal states of the environment and the pointer, uh, pointer index i. Yeah? And now you see what is this non-demolition measurement. This is the measurement on the, this is a projection on the support of those uh, signal states. Since the support are orthogonal for uh, for uh, for different uh, for different uh, classical indices. Yes, making those projections, uh, all the observers will obtain the same result. They will see the same index, the same index i, and, and they will not change the same. Of course, after forgetting the results, we are using here no, uh, standard classical mechanics, so no wonders. Yeah? We are not trying, as well, the jury to push it beyond and, and say that this explains the measurement problem and so on. We, we, we don't want to go into that. Okay, so after forgetting the results, we, we recover the state, and you see that the observers they do not disturb neither the state nor uh, nor uh, themselves if they ask the right question, which is the projection. Okay, it is called uh, now uh, it is called spectrum broadcasting because actually this is a, a, a sort of a very weak form of uh, quantum state broadcasting. Please observe that uh, if I trace out everything. Uh, apart from uh, one environment, what I get, I get a state which is a, which is a block diagonal. There can be some noise in, in those uh, in those density matrices, but they will uh, they will appear with the same probabilities as as the pointer 
as the point and basis uh, here. So since uh, those PIs are actually formally speaking the spectrum of the uh, reduced state of the system, so in, in, in this sense the spectrum gets <coughs> So every, every observer uh, will uh, see the same statistics PI of the, uh, of the point and basis. And this is obviously much weaker form of the, of the quantum state broadcasting because I'm broadcasting only uh, only the, the diagonal, only the eigenvalues, and not the this and not the whole state with all the, those quantum um, with all the quantum bases from the basis, yeah. Okay, and that's why we call it spectral broadcasting. Uh, so, okay, this I have already said, yeah, that the, 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 the uh, spectrum can be locally recovered by by projection by by each of the by each of the uh, observers independently. Uh, now the details, as I said, the details are irrelevant as the only thing which we need, we want to recover this index R. And of course the orthogonal supports, they, uh, they, this is equivalent to perfect one-shot distinguishability of those states. We make a projected measurement of our support and, and this is how we distinguish them. So in this sense, objectivity becomes a property of a quantum state. Okay, so if <coughs> to phrase the question differently, uh, you come to me with a, with, with a state of, uh, of, uh, of a system plus environment and you ask, so what, what form should it have in order to, to lead to a perceived objectivity? Okay? And, and the answer which, which comes from, from our work is that it has to have this spectrum broadcast form. Okay? So this is not the property of the state of the object, but it's the property of the whole of this, of the, this is a property of the If I tell you that the hydrogen atom is in a P state, this is... No, 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 no. This is a property of a, of a state between the system and the observed environment. Obviously, obviously. Yes, 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 obviously. <coughs> it is not a property of the, of the state alone because the state does not feel the environment. If you trace out the environment, how, how could I know if the environment encodes any information about the system or not? If it's a very hot uh, heat bath, for example, then it will call nothing. It will, it will not, not, not feel it. Okay? So, in this, it, so this is somehow gives, a, uh, gives this sort of decoherence type of reasoning uh, for objectivity, where objectivity appears as a, uh, some special uh, structure, some special property of a joint quantum state between the system and the, and the observed environment. Uh, now, since I was asked by uh, what is quantum Darwinism, so quantum, as far as I understand, quantum Darwinism uh, was or has or is uh, this type of reasoning that the information information about the system leaks into the environment, it gets redundantly copied. You see here that uh, the, there is no absolutely no. Uh, constraint on how many environments there are which encode the state. So there are many copies of the same information, so this, the index I stored in the, in the environment. And uh, this information can be locally, uh, locally accessed by, by independent observers. So this uh, leakage of information, this redundant copying of, of information is as far as I understand at the core of, of quantum Darwinism. Actually, we built on it. Yes? We, we, somehow built on this, uh, on this uh, intuition, but we, we try to make it precise and put it in terms of, of quantum states. Yeah, that's so not explain that. Darwin is about evolution, and here there is no evolution. So, so the, reasoning, the reasoning is the following, that when the system, when the system interacts with, with the environment, uh, if quantum Darwinism happens, then this means that uh, there is some preferred, uh, preferred basis information about which not only survives the interaction, but also... Uh, yes, I, I, I would like to remind that this is not only about evolution itself, but about the survival of the fitness. Yes. 
Yes. Interaction with the environment. Yes. yes. So, so exactly. the cycle of yes. fetus is during the evolution. Yes. Sure, everything is during the evolution because we cannot stop the time. Yeah. And here there is no evolution. Yes, yeah. no time. There is. In quantum gravity, there is evolution. No, well, there, there is. is. There, there is. There is. You can, you can think of this state, and actually I will show it now in, in, in concrete models. You can think of this state as a sort of asymptotical state. <coughs> Of course, of course. But actually, you can also pose the same question uh, independently of, of uh, evolution. You, re you get some state and you ask whether it encodes objectivity in the sense or not. But sure, the, the, so to say, the, 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 the archetypical way of getting the state is via some evolution, more or less complex, between system and the environment. And, and this is the end result of this. Event. And this is some asymptotic end result where the system already has stabilized, uh, or where at least the system has stabilized in, in, in its uh, pointer basis. Then this pointer basis is this uh, uh, the strongest or the fittest, which has survived the evolution, and not only survived but get uh, uh, but get proliferated. So multi this information got multiplied because it not only survived in the, in the sense of uh, pointer basis, but also the information about this information got copied in the in the environment, so it got spread out, like a bacteria which found a good ground for for uh, for growth and, and it and it grew. For this reason, you need at least two environments. Right? Yes, for one it would <coughs> for, for one it would it would, it would it would make no it would make no sense. Exactly. For, for one, it would make no sense. Uh, now, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, uh, of a comment. So, uh, what uh, Wojtek has been uh, has been studying, he has been studying what we call the uh, objectivity witness, mm -hmm. which is a, which is a scalar condition saying that quantum mutual information, i this is a quantum mutual information between the system and the observed fraction of the environment should be independent of the fraction size. This is the, this f is between 0 and 1, and this is a fraction size. We will not see in a, in a model how it works. But and it should be equal to the, to the entropy of the system, which is just, just the entropy of this probability distribution. And this, is, this has been used in, in, in the works by Wojtek and collaborators. Um, they have been studying the plot of the quantum mutual information as a function of the uh, observed environment size. Uh, however, uh, what is unknown is the sufficiency of this of this criterion. Actually, we try to study mathematically: does it does this criterion lead to uh, to spectral broadcast structure or not? And it appears to be a very difficult. Do you really get in control. some models the Shannon entropy here yeah. exists? Pardon? Do you really get in some models the We really get it. We really get it. Under what assumptions you can prove that it is equal? You cannot do it. We have so we, we neither have we neither have a proof nor we have a, a counter, counter example. So status is like observation, loose observation. And this, yes, and <laughs> this has been actually our, uh, so to say, point of, of attack, where we departed from quantum Darwinism. We, we could not understand why, why this condition should lead to what is claimed in the works, yeah, to why, why it should lead to, to the fact that we have this proliferation of information. Classically, there is no problem. Had, so, th had those been classical uh, entropies, that would be no, not a problem. So if somebody is not a, a, a quantum dun dunist, uh, so it's out of his automatic calibration. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it is so by <coughs> I don't know. I have to ask you what, I hope I hope this about is about the for example the intelligent design. I, I hope this is this is not so. Uh, we do not have counter examples, we have some su suggestive examples that it might be that this condition leaves uh, a space for some of the entanglement between, uh, between the system and the environment. But as I said, the, the status of, of, of the relation between, uh, between this uh, set of scalar conditions and this uh, spectrum broadcast structure is, is, is open. Okay?
Now, those states are actually no wonder they, they have been appealing in the, in the literature in this form or, or the other form, starting from Everett, probably this is a, uh, an example of partially traced branching state, and he, as he was calling, calling them. But our input is that we, we did not postulate it, but we tried to derive it. I agree that one can dispute with the assumptions, as this is usually the case, whether Bormann disturbance is too strong or not too strong, whether the strong independence is appropriate or not appropriate. But what I wanted to say that if you agree on the set of, of, of assumptions we have taken, you reach those states. You do not have to postulate them as it is done in the decoherence literature where people say, okay, the environment is monitoring the system, so this is a measurement. And as a result of measurement, we get a generalized GAZ state. When we trace it out, we will get this. Okay? We do not do it. We simply take the definition of objectivity and go word by word, trying to make it precise, making some assumptions, and reach this conclusion. Okay? Uh, all right. So that was uh, that was um, uh, that was a general. Uh, ideology, so to say. Now I wanted to show you a little bit of me, but it will not. I will not be very precise here. Okay, I just wanted to show you uh, more uh, more concrete methods <coughs> that we have been we have been using in in, in uh, searching for quantum for for uh, spectrum broadcast structure. Okay, so uh, the prop arguably the, the most common form of interaction between the system and multiple environments is this type of, uh, of uh, product interaction where uh, A is some observable on the system side and BKs are observables on, on, the, on the environment side. Okay. Most of the decoherence models like you know, those with uh, uh, decades of history which are now in, in, in all the textbooks if you, if you look at them, you will see that behind the, the system environment interaction is this type of a hybrid Okay. So answering your question, this, this is somehow how we uh, identify where is the system and where is the environment. I look by looking at the interaction. And A and B are supposedly commuting to the local uh, Hamiltonian. Well, this is a tough question. Of course, if they commute, it's good. Uh, yeah. It's good because then, then the solution of the whole system uh, is basically solving. Uh, we pass the interaction mm -hmm. picture and we basically solve yes. this. Okay? Uh, things start to be very interesting and difficult when, when they do not commute. So for the purpose of, of, of uh, the presentation which follows right now, I will uh, neglect the uh, self hamiltonian I will, I will simply, I will simply study. Let's say I'm in a, some some sort of a, a strong uh, interaction regime where the interaction Hamiltonian dominates the the self Hamiltonian. Okay, this is just to show you the method how we how we look for for spectrum broadcast structures. Yeah? Because now the natural question is okay. So we have this after result. So do those states get produced in a, in in a, at least in some known mode? So I wanted to show you some, some of the uh, machinery how to how to check for that. So let us let us start this this Hamiltonian. As I said, this is 90 something percent. I assume that there's the total Hamiltonian. Practically, I assume, I assume so. There is no problem. Either either they, they commute, either they commute, and I have passed to and I have passed to, to interaction picture, uh, or I simply neglect them, saying that this term. Uh, that this interaction is so strong that it dominates the self Hamiltonians or the time scales are such that, that we can neglect the self Hamiltonian. Even here, there is a lot of fun. Uh, although you can, you can diagonalize it perfectly, it, it is no problem to diagonalize it. And what we get as a, as a result is an interaction which we call the controlled unitary interaction, uh, where you see that uh, on the system side, on the system side, there is a control. There is a control. Uh, let's say that it's all finite dimension. There is a control QD, and on the environment side, 
we apply uh, we apply a unitary which depends on uh, on the eigenvalue of this observable a. Okay, now you already see what is the candidate for the pointer basis. Okay, there can be no other candidate than, than this. Uh, so in this sense, I personally think that when when one assumes Hamiltonian like that, then uh, largely uh, pointer basis is put by hand. Usually in quantum it's defined by a itself. Usually in quantum Darwinism literature, it said that it appears dynamically as a result of evolution. For me, it, it is largely put by hand. It is largely put by, by the interaction, interaction form. Of course, it does not have to, this, this unitary uh, evolution does not have to lead to the coherence. It can happen, but it does not lead to the coherence. So this uh, candidate for the pointer basis does not happen. But anyway. So what we get here is, is the controlled unitary, and now let me perform a very simple calculation. I will evolve the initial state, which I assume to be fully programmed, uh, with respect to everything, so the system and all the portions of the environment. Uh, and I evolve, I evolve uh, via this controlled unitary, and I get rid of some unobserved portion of the environment, okay, which I uh, symbolically denote 1 minus Fe. Okay, so Fe is the, is the observed, and 1 minus F is the, is the unobserved. As, as a result, we get uh, we get a simple we get a simple expression like that, where uh, I divided the sum into uh, diagonal and 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 all diagonal sums, and you see that on the diagonal I have almost what I what I wanted. So I have here some initial pointer probabilities. I have a candidate for the pointer basis, and I have some. Uh, some evolved states on the on the environment, but I also have this coherent. Uh, this coherent, uh, coherent tail. Okay? I have this coherent tail, which uh, depends on uh, on a scalar parameter called uh, the coherence factor, which is uh, which is obtained uh, from this state by tracing out the environment. Okay? If you do the very simple math, then you will see that in the whole diagonal, uh, in the whole diagonal part, there appears a product of of such terms. Okay? So now, in order to get to the spectrum broadcast structure, it is sufficient that two things happen. So first of all, the uh, coherent part disappears, which is a standard textbook decoherence. This can be treated as a, as a definition of decoherence, and this is this is nothing new, of course. This has been studied for studied for for, for decades in, 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 in a zillion of, of models. But what is left, it is, it is still not there because if I, if, I, if I manage to prove that this term disappears, uh, I do get something which resembles the spectrum broadcast structure, but I do not know if the signal states of the environment, if they have <coughs> orthogonal supports with respect to the uh, eigenvalue index A. So, so I need a point you take time averages here to get rid of this term. I may, you know, I, I, I behave like a, like a person going on a, on a road, you know, I, I use the whatever technique gives me the result. I will show you, I will show you, where is your stick? Uh, I do it without, I just balance with my body. Uh, I will show you the result where, where this is exact, you just have to uh, wait, I mean exact, asymptotically exact, you just have to wait a long time. Uh, but then I will also show you the, uh, one, one of the models where we have to assume random phases in order to get to it. All, all the tricks are... Otherwise there could be some revivals. Mm -hmm. Of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what I need, I need a second ingredient. I, I, I need to check whether the supports of my signal states on, on the environment evolve mm -hmm. once, the uh, there are, uh, <laughs> if there are orthogonal or not. And apparently, uh, what is the most useful is uh, is the generalized overlap, which looks uh, horrible. Which looks horrible, but if you work in the models, it, it just somehow, by some miracle, it's it's computable. One can compute. Okay, so I prove uh, or I check whether I have a spectrum broadcast structure in two steps. I checked for a standard textbook decoherence. Then I look at the signal uh, signal states on the environment, 
on the environments and I check whether those signal states uh, have uh, orthogonal supports for all the pairs of the uh, of the indices, uh, those, those eigenvalue indices. Okay? It can happen, you will see, that it can happen that actually this interaction, that this interaction is, uh, is uh, weak. So that each single environment, after the interaction, uh, it carries vanishingly small amount of information about the system. Okay, I mean, I can make it strong by adding some, some delta of time, so making an impulse, making a collisional one, but still the amplitude of this delta is, is small. Okay? So everything is small, the full Hamiltonian, the rest of the Hamiltonian is small, and this is even smaller. Yeah, smaller and smaller. There are smaller and smaller in the sense that amplitude of delta. I, I, I can always make it. I can always make it, uh, well, always, I can think of it as sort of a collisional, collisional type of interference. But I, this is just, just to give you the picture. In, it, it varies from model to model uh, how this Hamiltonian appears, what kind of uh, simplifications we can or we cannot make. It will, it will come in a moment. It will come in a moment. So uh, it can happen that actually the interaction is so weak that, that it has no chance of vanishing, that actually this generalized overlap is close to one, which means that, that for different indices, the signal states, they do not, uh, they do not feel, they do not feel the, the presence of the, of the system. And then what we invented is that we group the systems, we group the environments in what we call macro fractions, in order to, to, to get the information. So you take several environments. And I wanted to show it, I wanted to show this technique on, uh, Okay, so I'm quite fast. Uh, I wanted to show this technique on the first model which we studied. Uh, this is a small sphere, small dielectrical sphere illuminated by, by, by a flux, constant flux of, flux of photons. And the model is, is uh, already 30 years old. So, so this sphere is so small that it is a quantum object. And a classical object. No, this is a quantum, this is a quantum object in the sense that uh, we prepare it in a state which, which has a coherence in two possible positions. Uh, let, 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 let me, let me uh, come to it. I will explain it now. So uh, we have a uh, we have a, a dielectric sphere illuminated by by uh, incoming flux of photons, and we assume that the sphere can be at two possible locations, x1 and x2. And the sphere is small, both. Uh, so the sphere is small. Um, uh, relatively to the wavelengths of the of the incoming photons, and also what is more importantly, the separation between two possible positions of the sphere is uh, is uh, small with respect to the to the wavelengths of the incoming photons. And this is an example of this weak type of of interaction. Otherwise, imagine if if those photons are resolving enough, there would be enough photon. There could be a situation where it is enough to just shoot one photon and we resolve the position of the sphere. Okay? We wanted to, to avoid it. This is, of course, a perfectly valid regime, but we wanted to go into a more interesting regime where every single photon, after, sc after scattering of the sphere, carries vanishingly small information about the location because, uh, because of this large, uh, uh, small separation uh, condition. Okay? And the sphere, uh, the whole uh, crux is that the sphere, the sphere is prepared in an in a initial state which has coherences in those positions, in those possible positions. And now what we study, we study, or what has been studied by, by, uh, by the authors of the models and uh, uh, 30 years uh, in, in the literature is uh, how those incoming photons, how they decohere the sphere to take uh, either of the location with some, some probability. What is the justification for taking a macroscopic sphere instead of an atom or a molecule? Why, why does one not take an atom? Because with some sphere, internal structure, so it's difficult. It's difficult. It's just a proof of nature. Just to get the scattering properties of the sphere. <coughs> the 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 structure, structure. There is elastic yeah. scattering oh, elastic it does not fit any transition in the atom. So, so that yeah. you can call it, that yeah. they, you can call yeah. it, yeah. 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 So, so it's yeah. Okay, yes, yeah. yeah. so, 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 so,
Uh, this is actually one more uh, project that we are trying to make. So we are trying to, to, to solve it really, uh, really like you say. So we have an atom, we shine the field, mm -hmm. we have, I don't know, James Cummings coupling or something like that, and we see, we see the position dependent emission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, this is, this is the project which we, which we have started uh, recently, to try to make this sphere uh, um, uh, somehow less abstract. Yes? Because now, now uh, this is just an abstract dielectrical object which can be located at two positions and we prepare it by some magic we prepare it in a, in a, in a, in a state which has coherences in those positions, okay? So for the purpose of, of this presentation please let me, let me continue like that uh, So uh, there is a wave function describing this field yes. yes, but it's not dynamical it's the superposition of two. It's but just the superposition means that there is a wave function. Exactly. Yes. exactly. There is, there is a wave yeah. function. Yeah. There is a wave function of, of the sphere, but it does not. It will neglect the and the internal measurements of the sphere. Okay. It's, it, it is just a cubic. It is just a kinematical yes. kinematical cube. Okay. Uh, if, uh, we close it in the box as, as usual. It put the um, uh, boundary condition and then. Uh, after uh, the calculation will pass to a sort of thermodynamical limit where we increase the box, we increase the, the, the number of, of uh, photons scattered, but keeping the intensity, uh, the density, the density yes. constant. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, now, as, as you can already imagine, this condition, this condition for, forbids one single scattering from carrying from carrying actually practically any useful information about, about the position. Exactly, exactly. It will, uh, so exact calculation of, uh, asymptotic calculation of this, of this function actually shows that uh, it's close to, it, it approaches one in the thermodynamic limit and not zero. Which means that uh, every single photon the scattering of the sphere completely doesn't feel, completely doesn't feel the position. Hence comes the, the, the idea of a sort of a coarse graining of the environment. So we group the photons. We group the photons in, in some um, portions, which is scale uh, with, the total, uh, with the total number of photons scattered up to time t. And t, this is the total number of photons scattered up to, up to some time t. Uh, we group them into macroscopic portions. Why, they call, why I call them macroscopic? Because they scale with the total number, so they, they survive the thermodynamic okay? and, and this grouping is, is, is very simple, since the photons uh, do not interact among themselves, I simply take, as a state of the macrofraction, I simply take a tensor product of, of the states of, of each individual single photon. Okay? Now, uh, performing all the, all the calculations, we can find the uh, decoherence factor, and this has been known since the time of uh, of, uh, of Jos and Zeh. Uh, in the thermodynamic limit, it has a nice uh, nice uh, exponential decay with uh, with a decoherence uh, with a decoherence uh, time scale uh, given by some uh, well expression. Some complete expression. Uh, this this is uh, this probability is the probability is the distribution of momenta in the initial state of the photon. What okay. I assume and what is this theta of k? Theta of k, yeah. theta of k is the is the angle scattering in oh, no. yes. It is not scattering. Okay, okay. It is the angle between the separation vector yes. and the incoming incoming photon. Okay. Uh, so. Ah, and, and this P of K, so I, I assume I forgot to, to put it, I assume that the photons are initially in a state which is diagonal in the, in the momentum basis uh, with some probabilities which I call a P of K and this measure P of K is concentrated around this condition. So I pick only those, uh, I, 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 when, I, when I shape the state, I, I pick only those photons which are not resolved. Okay? This is exactly with a chromatic material. It's not exactly monochromatic exactly, but it, it's nearly monochromatic. So this, this has been known for, for, for decades, uh, okay. but in the box all photons are monochromatic. Or monochromatic. So it's in the thermodynamic limit. 
but the, but the initial state is not in the, okay the initial state uh, so the initial state of, of every photon is the same so it's it's uh, let's say for every k uh, so for every environment this is I, I write it in the box yeah uh, where this measure is, is concentrated around no this is understandable in the box becomes larger and larger than the box is larger for there is a finite sure, sure. Okay, so uh, this this has been known as I said, but we were able to calculate, and I must tell you this was not the easiest calculation I have done in my life. Uh, we were able to calculate the generalized overlap. Mm -hmm. Okay, and generalized overlap mm -hmm. uh, also scales exponentially also scales exponentially uh, with time uh, now this M and this is perhaps the most unfortunate uh, notational uh, the, the most unfortunate notation but I'm sorry I have to stick to it this is the size of this macro fraction ok this is this scaling it goes between 0 and 1 and uh, there is some parameter alpha which, which depends on uh, which depends on the decoherence time so this is the definition of alpha, it depends on the decoherence time, the density and it also depends on averages, uh, on average uh, um, uh, transition, how to say, it, transition elements, scattering transition elements okay, calculating, uh, calculating this we see that um, if we wait long enough then both decoherence and, uh, and this orthogonalization happen provided we take macro fraction so provided we do not look at the single photon but we look at the group which scales with the total number of photons scattered up to some time, some time t okay and this we treat as a proof that uh, there is a spectrum broadcast structure being formed between the system so between the sphere and uh, the macro fractions of the states the states of those uh, coarse grain uh, environment. This, con this coarse graining is very similar to, let's say, what has what is being done in liquids, where every point of a liquid, uh, in, in we know that it consists of a sufficiently large amount of uh, of uh, molecules, but still it's small enough so that we can we can treat it as a point. So it's somehow similar here. There's a tricky problem here with the limits because you have two limits and they do not commute they do not commute yes that's right that's, that's why I say this is if you took the limit t equals infinity first you would not get this absolutely you are absolutely right you are absolutely right those limits have to be taken in into uh, they, they have to be taken in a, in a, proper, uh, in a proper order first thermodynamic limit we will remove the box and then the asymptote otherwise of course it does not work you are perfectly right uh, okay, so that was that was the first model study, and actually this is how we came to those spectrum broadcast structure. We simply noticed that in this model, uh, uh, what we get is, is is what we can prove is this. Okay? Now, uh, maybe just to finish with this model, uh, we are also we were also able to prove this condition. Uh, it's also not an easy calculation. We had to use. Uh, uh, Adenauer, Alitsky, those anthropic uh, inequalities. Uh, it was not easy, but we have we have a control we have a control over a uh, difference between the mutual information and uh, and, and the entropy in terms uh, in terms of uh, those decay uh, decay parameters. We, we we can control it fully. Okay. Right. The next. Next, uh, uh, so this model, uh, what, what, it, it had, what it leads to, in this calculation, it leads to uh, what we call uh, information theoretical phases, where, which can be uh, schematically sketched like, uh, like this. But here we plot uh, the mutual quantum mutual information, asymptotic quantum mutual information between the system and the observed environment. Here we uh, uh, plot the fraction of the observed environment. So. Uh, how many of those photons in total we observe 
and how many we trace out. And this model has uh, has two phase transition. So first first phase is a product phase where this uh, environment does not learn anything about the system, and you must treat every point here in a in in, in this coarse grained uh, uh, so to say fluid mechanical. Uh, sense okay so uh, f equal to zero means it does not trivially mean that i observe zero photons but it means that i observe a, a small amount of photons which does not scale with a total with a total uh, number of scattered photons okay so every point here is modulo uh, modulo and microscopic amount of photons so if i do not observe enough of them i get no correlation between the system and the environment then if I, if I observe sufficiently many and I wait sufficiently long, what I get is, is what we call a broadcasting phase in which we can prove that this uh, spectrum broadcast structure is being formed and it leads, uh, uh, via those entropic inequalities, it leads to, uh, to the fact that the mutual information stabilizes at, at the entropy of, of the initial uh, probability distribution of the positions and then we have we have another phase transition to a full quantum information phase where simply we observe all the quantum uh, all the quantum uh, uh, correlations including entanglement, discords in total all right so uh, now i switch to a much more advanced model much more difficult maybe model which is known as quantum Brownian motion uh, this model has been also known for, for for quite some time. I could not pick up a good <laughs> reference to who started it first. <laughs> yes, this is the model. The model is a central oscillator. <laughs> exactly. So there is a uh, there is a um, central oscillator coupled to a bus of oscillator. Yes. Via bilinear, bilinear cap. And of course, these operators do not commute with. And of course, here we run into problems. So, uh, so, they, uh, so you see that this is nothing else but just a, a system of masses on splits, basically. Yes. Uh, so our central system is, is the oscillator. I used capital letters because, as you can imagine, I will try to make it some sort of uh, somehow macroscopic. Yes. As I said, this is a completely reversed reasoning to born Markov approximation. Instead of uh, watching the effect of the environment on the system, we treat the system as a sort of macroscopic so that it shifts its environment and we look how this environment gets shifted by the interaction with the system. Okay? Okay, so we, uh, we approach this model. What we try to do, we try to... Uh, and now, of course, you will have correlations between different environments. We kill them. <laughs> that was that was that How was actually human. Uh, that was actually the uh, the starting point. We wanted to see whether we have here a chance for a spectrum broadcast structure or not. So we tried to kill the back reaction, so the uh, environment environment coupling via system, by assuming that the central system is very massive. <laughs> I see that you are disappointed, but if anybody wants to try to solve the full system and prove the, uh, prove the existence of the broadcast structure, I am happy to help. It would be impossible to prove it in generality. This is, this is, uh, this is my... No, no, to solve, to, solve. to prove his, his uh, form of ah, the... Already, already in this approximation... not true that in general you can prove it. Well, in general, of course, you cannot solve it. No, no. I mean, you can solve yeah, anything no, with this. Come on. We know it. Some of us spent, you know, part of our solve curriculum solving this. But, <laughs> all right. But it's not a question of solving. That's obvious. It will, it it will, will not always solve. It will not always lead to a yeah, solution. Exactly. 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 Exactly.
we try to see just in the first order, so to say, yeah, which we try to get rid of the of the central system and see it goes or not. Okay. So what what we get, we get a controlled uh, controlled uh, again a controlled type of of, of the evolution. Uh, where the control parameter is the Schrodinger position of the, of the central system. Okay, what we did, we actually in the introduction picture we cut the momentum. We said that the mass is large, and we, 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 we try to argue that we cut the we, we cut the momentum uh, from the Hamiltonian. And uh, mm -hmm. again, some of the system pass, uh, passes unobserved. Yeah. Having this at hand, at hand, we actually have everything. So we can we can go on with our procedure and, and check for the decoherence factor and uh, uh, and uh, uh, distinguishability of the of the environmental uh, states of the states of the of the bus oscillators and we got we got the following result so this decoherence factor is a, is a well known thing you can find it in, in any in any textbook. It scales uh, quadratically with the uh, with the separation. Uh, the dependence on the temperature. Ah, we assume that the uh, that the environment is is in a thermal state at, at some temperature t. Uh, now uh, the dependence of, on the temperature is also a standard one. And here we got some complicated uh, function of uh, of time. Again, this is all. This is all. This is not complicated. This is all well known. Well, I I, I will make it complicated in a moment. This is this is all well known. What uh, what was as far as I understand, what was not known is that it is possible to calculate also the generalized overlap, and this was done ingeniously by Janek Tuzjewski, who was shifting here, who was using different representation, uh, shifting from coherent to. Uh, to Fox state representation, and he was able to to calculate this this factor, and apparently it, it is almost of the same form as the decoherence factor, with only the inverse dependence on the on the temperature. Okay, so this was somehow uh, this calculation again is far from clear. Cal calculation of those, as, as we learned, calculation in, in models of those functions is is, is this general algorithm is, is far from. Um, so now we ask the question whether we can fulfill those those conditions. As it is right now, obviously you see that if if the phases, if the if the frequencies are fixed, then we run into trouble because we can have uh, revivals or well, we can have actually a periodic function. So what we did uh, again, it was somehow somehow non-canonical instead of. Uh, passing to uh, instead of passing to the usual uh, continuum limit and going to, to spectral densities, we assume uh, random frequencies. Okay. For the purpose of this work, we took the, the, the simplest possible, namely we took them IAD from uh, interval uh, from some fixed interval. Ah, okay. We wanted also to have this condition of uh, uh, the analog of condition of uh, weak coupling as we have with the sphere here so that single environment does not decohere the system now in, in the quantum Brownian motion uh, this condition uh, translates, to, translates into off resonance condition which means that the, uh, each single environment is off resonant with the, with the central system you can see it easily here Yes. So if, if my uh, oscillator, if my uh, bath mode becomes too close to, uh, to the central system frequency, then this factor, uh, this factor explodes, and both this function and this function go to your And there's also some this difference between cosines. Yeah, yeah. so this should somehow cancel. So this should somehow cancel. Uh, Actually, the exact result for the model, of course, it works perfectly well if, if real omega is equal to capital omega. So if there is some explosion, it's only due to some not very careful approximation. Maybe, maybe. It, it can be. But I even doubt whether there is such an explosion here. Uh, we yeah, maybe because of the second term. We saw it. I mean, we, numerically we saw it. Numerically we saw it that there was, it was much easier to, to decohere and get, uh, get orthogonal when, when the bands, when the bus, uh, Modes were close to close to all. 
Okay, we get to see it correctly, but in the log formula, the center one, you need trace somehow. Ah, obviously, yes, yes, here is trace, yes, yes, fine. Yes, <laughs> well, anyway, anyway, what I, what I wanted to show you, what I wanted to tell you is that there is a mode, there is a regime of this model where a spectral broadcast structure is being formed, okay? Whether this regime is reasonable, unreasonable, general, too specified or not, this is, of course, disputable. But I just general it is not. General it is not, obviously. But I wanted, I, I, I just wanted to, to show you a proof of principle. But in this model, also spectral broadcast structure is being formed. Okay. So now it can, Now let me show uh, the results. We have them. We have them numerically. I'm sorry. I, I, I hope the quality is still at the at the limit of being visible. Uh, so uh, so uh, here are two uh, sets of plots. Uh, one set is for for a battle fraction of 10 oscillators, which means that I trace out 10 oscillators and I observe 10 oscillators. Okay, so this is somehow a symmetric situation. I observe as many oscillators as, as I have passed unobserved. Okay. Uh, now uh, the green plots are the decoherence uh, factor. This is this factor. Okay. And uh, this is, of course, a, a, a sample realization for uh, for some set of random of random faces uh, taken from the interval uh, ten times larger than the uh, central system frequency. Okay, you see that for ten oscillators, it does decay at the beginning. It does decay nicely, but then it starts to revive and it starts to oscillate. Which, uh, so now the magenta plots are the uh, distinguishability factors. Uh, those factors, the, these factors. <coughs> there is okay. no any difference between these two people. <laughs> well, except of color. <laughs> no, uh, please, the, the, there is the naked eyes. <laughs> there is, there is some. Yes, sure. Yes, yes. This region, the differences. Yeah. But with your glasses. No. Okay, okay, so we see, we see the same, we see the same situation with uh, with the decoherence, with, with the distinguishability mm -hmm. function. Yeah? But uh, look, what happens is that they are, they are nearly yeah, identical yeah, apart from the temperature. They're almost the same, apart from the temperature. Now you will see the difference. Now, if, if, I, increase the, this, if I increase the macro fraction size, okay, if I pass to 30 oscillators, then you see that the picture changes. At least on the time scale we have simulated. Uh, what happens is that uh, both functions decay and they, they have only some marginal and um, marginal Noises. Okay. Now, uh, but this is of course not uh, not enough to study to study sample uh, sample realizations. So uh, what we did, we moved to time averages. We averaged we averaged both functions uh, over a sufficiently large period of uh, of time, and since both functions are non-negative. Uh, Vanishing, uh, vanishing uh, average will indicate that the typical fluctuations of the functions above zero are, are small. Okay. So uh, this is this is the situ this is the plot for ten oscillators, and again the green the green uh, and this is a function of the temperature. So this is the averages. These are the averages uh, plotted as a function of the temperature. Now you see that up to some 10 to minus 2 kelvins, given the parameters we use for simulation. Uh, they, they are identical, but they are off the ground, they are above the zero. Then uh, when we increase the temperature, of course, the decoherence happens because the, the, the environment is, is hot. It, it exchanges quite a lot of energy with the, with the system. So the decoherence, decoherence does happen, but the environment is so noisy that it is unable to encode information about the position of the, of the central system. And uh, uh, distinguishability, this, this generalized overlap, it, it, uh, it, it, it explodes. Now we increase the size to 30 oscillators, and now you see that up to up to some some temperature 10 minus 2, okay, given the parameters, both functions stay stay uh, at the, at zero, indicating numerically that the spectrum broadcast structure is being is being formed here. And then again, heating of course does not change the decoherence because it's already decohered, but it uh, uh, it decreases the informational capacity of the environment, and it, and it does not encode 
and it starts to encode the information uh, about, about the system. Okay? Uh, one can actually generalize the initial states from thermal states, the initial states of the, of the bus from thermal states to a uh, single mode Gaussians. Uh, so one can take into account squeezing and in, in one of the papers we have we have some numerical studies of the squeezings. We also have some analytical analytical uh, studies here using low large numbers. So actually, equivalently coming back to to, to uh, continuous spectral densities, and we have time scales of those of those decays decays here, which actually fit uh, quite well with the, with the simulations. Okay, so this I have no time for. So. The outlook. Um, so the whole work now moves in two directions. So first of all, we want to see um, more models. We want to see whether this feature of, of, of producing spectrum broadcast states, whether it happens, whether it's somehow model specific or, or is it a general feature. So uh, of course the next candidate are spin system, and here we have partial results, not published yet, but there are, there are few spectrum broadcast structures. Uh, now, uh, truly dynamical objectivity, I, this I will not have time to talk about, but this is, this is actually connected to, uh, say, studying uh, models like quantum Brownian motion, but, but without those approximations where we cut the back reaction from, uh, from the environment to the system, so in a full, in a full dynamical, uh, dynamical generality. Um, now some simple QED model where we have also some partial. What is simple QED? Yeah, I I went I know QED. Uh, moving particle. Uh, a particle, a free particle illuminated by a field. I will show you maybe later. Mm -hmm. And uh, another direction. Not today. Not, not today. Yeah, 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 not today. Obviously. Not later. <laughs> not later. Uh, and obviously, um, another approach, instead of going model by model, is just to try to prove that it is somehow uh, the, 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 uh, uh, yes, the generation of those <laughs> spectral broadcast structures is, is perhaps perhaps generic. And this is one of the open questions. So, uh, taking the methods of, of random Hamiltonians, can we perhaps uh, prove or disprove that those states are generic, or if they are generic? Okay, so that was that was the